Wayfinder, to put it simply, has had a rough start, and I say that as a founder. Yes, I've been with this game from the beginning. I played in some of the betas and even bought one of the founders packs because I really believed in the game and wanted to see it succeed. I had my reasons. First, I was looking for a replacement for Destiny 2, which I played a lot at the time, and I thought Wayfinder might be that game. Second, I was drawn to the concept, the art style, and the overall idea. Honestly, knowing that Digital Extremes, the creators of Warframe, were involved gave me more confidence in the game. I wanted Wayfinder to become my go-to game. Unfortunately, a lot has happened since then, from internal issues at Digital Extremes, which I won't get into here, to the game shifting from an MORPG to more of a single-player RPG that allows co-op, thanks to the Echoes update it received. But we're here to talk about the Wayfinder of today, not the one it used to be, and to decide if it's worth playing now. First of all, welcome. I'm Beatrice, and I'll be your guide for this video. Today, we'll be taking a close look at Wayfinder. We'll go over the game's settings, explore the menus, mechanics, and more. By the end of the video, we'll answer the big question, is the game worth playing? So grab something to drink, sit back, and let's dive in. So what exactly is Wayfinder? According to the developers, it's a character-based online action RPG. You'll pick from a range of characters, each with their own unique playstyles and abilities, and use their powers to defend against enemies threatening to destroy their world. You'll explore dungeons, hunt beasts, and fight enemies with friends, all while gathering crafting materials for weapons, housing, augments, and more. These are essential for strengthening your character and fighting back against a dangerous force called the Gloom. It all sounds great, right? That's what initially pulled me into the game too. The good news is that the core elements, story, missions, and overall goals haven't changed. However, where things have shifted is in the combat and the game world, but we'll dive deeper into that a bit later. Wayfinder was developed by Airship Syndicate, the same studio behind popular games like Battle Chasers, Night War, and Ruined King, A League of Legends Story. So this isn't their first game and hopefully it won't be their last. I think they have a lot of potential, especially when it comes to their art direction and the way they build their games. Honestly, I'm excited to see more titles from them in the future. Now that we've covered the game's background and the developers behind it, let's jump into the actual gameplay. This is the game's initial screen, where you get your first look at Wayfinder's character roster. You won't have access to all characters right away, but don't worry. You can craft them as you progress through the game. I'll explain more about that later when we dive into how the game has evolved over time. After pressing any button, you'll be taken to the main menu where you have three options. New game, credits, and settings. If you're new to the channel, I usually like to start by checking out the game's settings in a section I call the technical look. So let's get into it. The first settings we see are the gameplay options, which are pretty standard. One thing that surprised me is the option to change the difficulty, something that wasn't available when the game was still an MMORPG. What bothers me a little though, is that increasing the difficulty doesn't give you better rewards or more XP. It just makes the game harder. I wish they had made it so that higher difficulty levels would give you more XP and materials, similar to how games like Diablo handle it. Below that, there's also world scaling, which works hand in hand with the difficulty. This feature makes all the enemies, whether you're in the starting area or the final zones, scale to your level. If you want a real sense of progression, I suggest turning world scaling off. The rest of the settings like vibration, camera zoom, and language are pretty straightforward. So let's move on to the display settings. The display settings are fairly basic, but that's expected for this type of game. I maxed out the field of view for a better combat view. Below that, we have the usual performance and quality modes. I tested both, and to be honest, I didn't notice much difference in terms of FPS or game quality. Maybe the textures are a little sharper, but it doesn't seem to lock the game at 30 FPS, which could be a bit misleading. The UI user interface settings are simple, mostly just options to show or hide the HUD, so I didn't change anything there. As for the sound settings, they're pretty standard with just volume sliders. There are no options for specific sound profiles like home theater, headphones, or TV, which is a bit disappointing. However, we do have the subtitle option here, so that's a plus. Next up are the controls settings, where we have sliders for sensitivity, options for inverted cameras, and some toggles. 
since I haven't yet experienced how fast the camera moves during gameplay, I'm going to leave everything at default for now. Finally, we have the bindings. This is where you can customize any button to your liking. Nothing is locked, which means you can completely map your controls however you want without any restrictions. Definitely a big plus in my opinion. With the settings out of the way, let's dive into the gameplay. Once we select the new game option, we're prompted to choose the difficulty before jumping into the game. Since I'm not sure how tough the monsters behave, I'm going to select challenging difficulty. After that, the game begins with a beautifully animated cinematic that gives us some background on the lore, specifically how this world was created and where the gloom demons we'll be fighting come from. Right after the cinematic, we're asked to choose one of three starting characters. Each character represents a specific class with unique skills and gameplay. I'm going with Nis, the character I first played with. Once we've picked our character, the game starts in the gloom, which is basically the tutorial area. Here we can test out the key bindings, adjust the settings if needed, and of course, get used to the controls. Before we finish the tutorial, we'll face our first boss fight, giving us a taste of what to expect from boss battles in the game. The combat is pretty dynamic and exciting, though not nearly as challenging as something like Dark Souls. Once out of the gloom, we'll arrive in the main hub area of the game, which looks very different from how I remember it. This area used to be filled with players, but now it's just NPCs. One thing worth mentioning is that the game's performance has improved significantly, running at a smooth 60 FPS with almost no dips. Our next task is to continue the story mission, which involves talking to various NPCs. By interacting with them and progressing through the main story, we'll unlock essential game mechanics. Despite the shift to a single-player experience, these core mechanics remain unchanged from when the game was multiplayer. Since we're talking about mechanics, let's take a look at the character menu. Once opened, you'll see your character portrait on the right side of the screen, while on the left, there are various options depending on what you want to do. The character menu is pretty self-explanatory. This is where your loadout is displayed. And like the tutorial says, this is where you'll spend most of your time when trying to level up any character. As you can see, many characters are locked, but all of them can be unlocked through gameplay. In the past, you had the option to buy these characters if you didn't want to grind for them, but now you don't have a choice. It's either grind or nothing. When it comes to the inventory and quest menu, these are also pretty straightforward. But if you ever feel lost, you can always open the quest menu to remind yourself of your current objective. The discoveries menu works like an encyclopedia, collecting everything you encounter in the game. Some items are unlocked by default, while others will be unlocked as you progress. Now, the most interesting part, the season pass. In this game, it's represented as a tower. There are two characters locked behind the tower pass, and you get to choose which character to start with. Once you've made your selection, as the game explains, you'll need keys to advance in the tower pass. These keys are earned through gameplay, progressing in the story and completing missions. Eventually, by playing the game and gaining experience, you'll unlock all the rewards from the tower. Keep in mind, the game is primarily single player with a co-op option, so the pass isn't going anywhere. You can take your time and enjoy the experience without rushing. Before we move on, it's worth mentioning that you also have the option to customize your profile, which is a nice touch. You can select the colors you want, the background, and more. To complete most missions and advance the story, you'll spend a lot of time in the gloom, which is accessed through a purple gate. While you can explore the open world, it's not fully open, but rather a semi-open world with large maps separated by loading screens. It's similar to how games like Guild Wars 2 and Final Fantasy XIV structure their environments. Once inside a dungeon, you'll battle monsters and find chests with loot. However, you won't find items like weapons or armor in the traditional sense because everything in Wayfinder has to be crafted. If you've played Warframe, you'll already be familiar with this system. After clearing a dungeon, you'll be rewarded with bonus loot if you meet certain criteria. In this case, since it's tied to the story, you receive specific rewards regardless. The gameplay has significantly improved, feeling much more responsive than before. In earlier versions, the game would lag so badly that your hits wouldn't even register, but now it runs smoothly. At this point, you'll encounter the Echo Matrix, which gives you a first glimpse at the game's crafting system. Crafting is a huge part of Wayfinder. 
In fact, everything is craftable, from weapons to even new characters. So be prepared to craft a lot as you progress through the game. We can't forget about NPCs in Wayfinder, so let's take a visit to Arsenal, the weapon merchant. In this game, weapons can be awakened, meaning you can increase their stats over time. This feature makes every weapon viable, which is great since it encourages variety in playstyles. At Arsenal's shop, you can also buy the basic versions of weapons without needing to craft them, which is convenient if you're not into grinding for materials. There are more shops and merchants to be discovered as you play, but I won't spoil everything. I'll leave those for you to explore on your own. Walking around the main hub brings back memories of how the game used to be, filled with players jumping around and showing off their cool outfits. Now the hub feels much quieter. It's mostly just you or maybe a couple of friends if you're playing co-op. The same goes for the open world. There are still global events which show up on the map with a timer, but now you'll have to tackle them alone, unlike before when you had other players around to help. Talking about other players, let's discuss how multiplayer works in Wayfinder. Once you access the Find Party menu, you'll be greeted with a message letting you know that this feature is still a work in progress, meaning you might run into some errors while using it. And unfortunately, I did experience some. Here's what the Find Party UI looks like. Basically, players make their session public, and anyone who wants to join can do so from this menu. I tried joining a few parties at random, but kept encountering errors. After a few tries, I finally joined a party that was way above my level. The other player seemed happy to have someone to play with, so I stuck around. Because of the level difference, I gained XP faster than usual, but I was also getting knocked out pretty often. Still, my test was a success. The co-op feature, despite its flaws, works. So if you want to play co-op but don't have friends available, you can definitely use this option and find other players to team up with. And I believe this is enough for a first impression of the game. I've tried to keep most spoilers out of this video because with Wayfinder now being a single player experience, the story has become the main focus. Hopefully I haven't spoiled too much for you. So let's answer the question you're here for. Is Wayfinder worth playing? Honestly, my answer is mixed, yes and no. I'm conflicted because, on one hand, the game has improved a lot in terms of performance and gameplay, it's smoother, more responsive, and generally more polished, but on the other hand, it feels lonely. Very lonely, in fact. The world was clearly designed for an MMO experience, and if you were like me and played the game when it was still an MMO, you'll feel the difference. It's hard to shake that empty feeling, especially when you remember what it was like to see hundreds of players around, helping with world bosses and events. Sure, there's a party finder and matchmaking if you don't want to play alone, but it doesn't compare to the energy of a fully populated MMO world. Despite all the drama and changes, I'm happy Wayfinder wasn't cancelled and that it's still playable, but I do miss its original MMO aspect a lot. On the other hand, if you've ever wanted to play a single-player MMO-like game, this could be the perfect fit for you. The gameplay is at its best, the game feels stable, and the story remains mostly unchanged. So if you don't agree with my thoughts, you can always draw your own conclusions. One last note, Wayfinder is now buy-to-play, not free-to-play, as it was originally planned. So that's another factor to consider when deciding if it's worth your time. And that wraps up this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please don't hesitate to like the video and maybe even consider subscribing. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.